A good Sunday morning to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God, welcoming you to our morning worship and uh, thanking God that the Lord has led you in our direction today. We want to be a blessing to you as we minister God's life-giving word. Of course, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And that's exactly why we preach the word here at Valley Assembly of God. I'm going to be in Psalms, the 37th chapter. If you want to get your Bible and turn there, while you are, let me just remind you that we are here every Sunday morning for Bible study for all ages at 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock is morning worship. Children's Church is going on at the same time. And then Sunday evening, our evening worship. And while we're in the sanctuary for worship, we've got Royal Rangers and Girls Ministries. Monday is prayer meeting at 12 noon. And then Wednesday night, our Oasis service, where we have a wonderful time of praise and worship, in-depth Bible study, the youth group meets, the children are meeting. We'd love to have you be part of what God is doing here at Valley in this year of 2022. Every time I say that, I can't, I can't believe it. This morning, I am going to finish a series that I have been preaching for a number of weeks referring you to various road signs and then making the application of the road or the highway to eternity that every one of us are traveling. This morning's message, it is a sobering one, and I pray that if none of the other messages have touched your heart, I pray the one this morning will really grip you and open your eyes. Here's the two verses I want you to see here. In the 37th verse, I want you to see these words. The end of that man is peace. 38th verse, notice these words. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. That is a very graphic and realistic picture of the two paths that individuals are on, the two roads that people are traveling. The one with God that will bring them to peace. The one that is not with God that will bring them to a place where they'll be cut off for all eternity. This morning's road sign, road ends. Let's pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious word of God that's open before us today. Lord, this is a message, God, that I pray that will touch every single heart and life under the sound of my voice. May you anoint your word, anoint your messenger, God. And I pray, Lord, deal with our hearts and lives today in a special way we pray. We cannot thank you enough. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a sign which you sometimes see at the end of a street in the city or you're driving out in the country along a road and you see the sign, road ends. It tells you you can go no farther than that. That beyond there, there is no road. So on the journey of life, we come to a place where the, where the road, so far as this world is concerned, it comes to an end. It's been an amazing thing to me. Of course, I've preached all these years. I have preached hundreds of funerals. Babies, children, teenagers, young adults, middle-agers, seniors, I don't know that I have been more moved as I have been in the last couple months. I've seen various people that have been close to me for a number of years slip from this world into eternity. The road here ended. Now I understand that that was going to happen to them and I understand it will one day happen to me. But when it does happen, it is sobering and it, cause, it should cause us to to pause and to think and to make sure that we are ready for eternity. Because for every one of us, the day will come that the road will end as we know it in this life. So hence we ask ourselves the question, or at least we ought to, what lies beyond the end of life's journey? Is this all there is to it, or is there something beyond? Another sign that maybe you have seen at one time or another that goes along with the 
road ends is think of tomorrow. It was no doubt a sign warning the motorist and the traveler against the dangers and the injuries which might follow reckless and careless driving. Let him think of his future welfare. That is, let him remember that tomorrow he will not want to lie in a hospital or even worse yet, lie in a morgue. But we lift this warning into the highest significance this morning. Think of tomorrow. Think of life. Listen to me. Life after death. If man ended when the road ended, that is the road of life, at 50 or at three score and 10 or 80, then it would make but little difference whether you thought about tomorrow or not, for there would be no tomorrow. But if there is a tomorrow, and as a believer, we know there is, then it behooves us to think about it. Young and his night thoughts said truly this statement. All men think of others mortal but themselves. We can see anybody and everybody else laying in a casket, but it's difficult, if not impossible, to see yourself there. That is a common trait. The ultimate fact in life we rarely apply to ourselves. The first thing that I want you to see this morning is this. Think of tomorrow in relationship to those about you in this life. The time comes when, so far as your relationship with them is concerned, nothing can be changed. When the silver cord is loosed and the golden bowl is broken, then however much we might have wished that we could change things, it now is absolutely impossible. What we have written, we have written. The question then to ask ourselves is this. Is my relationship with my fellow man, with those near to me, with the members of my own family, such as I am willing to contemplate as final, if life's road should come to an end tomorrow, what does that mean to you? Remember that Thomas Carlyle had to say about the wife whom he realized he had somewhat neglected in his studies and writings, Oh, that I had you yet for five minutes by my side, that I might tell you all. But you can't even have that loved one back for five minutes. Not even five minutes. And those other words he wrote too, which he said, Cherish what is dearest while you have it near you, and wait not till it is far away. Blind and deaf that we are, oh, thank if thou yet love anybody living, wait not till death sweep down. Love them now. Speak the words now. Give them the flowers now. Before it is too late. And there's no turning back the clock. There's a very old and very impressive story of a youth greatly beloved who died. In the next life, he besought God to let him return to this world for just one day. A day that was one of the least notable, one of the most ordinary days of his past life. God granted him his request. He appeared again just as he had at the age of 15 in his old home that he grew up in. As he entered the living room, his mother passed by him, engaged in some household task. Then he stepped out into the yard, and his father, busy with some yard work and carrying a handful of tools, gave him an indifferent glance and merely passed on. Then the youth awoke to the fact that we are all dead, that we are only really alive when we are conscious of the treasure we have in our friends and our loved ones. A piercing parable of truth that ought to sink into the hearts and minds of every single one of us. And since that is so, then how awake and alive we ought to be before the road comes to an end. 
The second thing is this. We ought to think of tomorrow in connection with the life to come. This life is a trial. It's a test for the life to come. And the final decisions and choices of this life cannot be revoked when the end comes. Right now, while you draw breath and have a heartbeat, now you can make the changes. But once you're dead, it's done. This is the life when we have the opportunity for repentance. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. None of us are promised tomorrow. Have you ever visited the famous Strasbourg Cathedral? In the south part of that cathedral, there's this famous clock. It not only preaches from hour to hour, a great and solemn sermon. But it is a monument to the greatness of the human mind. Among its many intricate devices is one that marks the ellipsis of the sun. So ingenious is the combination that it will last forever. As long as the earth wheels around the sun, that device, if preserved, will mark the ellipsis. At an hour of noon, statutes of the 12 apostles emerge and pass reverently in procession before the figure of Christ, who lifts his hands to bless them. While the cock flaps its wings and crows three times, in the center are four figures representing the four ages of life, and in the midst of them stands death. At the first quarter, glad childhood emerges and strikes the bell. At the second quarter, rosy youth comes forth. At the third quarter, somber manhood comes forth and lifts its robust arm and it strikes the bell. And at the last quarter, feeble and decrepit old age lifts wearily its hammer to strike. When it is finished, Death lifts its arm and strikes the hour. Childhood, youth, manhood, old age, death. Some of those who stood watching the clock that day in the cathedral belonged to life's first quarter. Some of them belonged to the youth's golden morn. Some to manhood's sober day. And some to the last quarter and the feebleness of old age. And one could see too plainly that ere long death would lift its hammer and strike the passing of their life. To stand and watch the figure strike the quarter hour, one after the other, was subduing. It was impressive. It was solemnizing. It made one think of applying their heart unto wisdom. As he put himself in one of those four groups, one wondered how much time was left. Do you know how much time you have left? Have you ever thought about that? The third stage, the fourth stage, or soon the stroke of death. It made one ask themselves, what have I done with my life? What have I done? What have I invested in? How have I made the world better for my time here? What am I doing with it right now? I am fearful right now after coming out of this COVID, not even coming out of it yet. We're still battling it. So many have become somewhat lackadaisical. My friends, don't allow this pandemic to get you off target of living after God and serving the Lord with all your heart. You still must make your life count while you have life. And I pray you will. Even while the curious onlookers, onlookers stood and silent watched the hands of that clock proceed around the face of that dial, and one after the other, the five figures come forth to strike their blows. My life, your life, listen to me, my life, your life is marching onward to the end of the road. 
no prayer, no entreaty, no physician skill, no tear can hold it back. The road, my friends, for every one of us will end one day. What's the conclusion of all of this? There are some things which we can, which can be done only in this life. Only in this life. And before the road ends, and one of those things, and maybe the greatest thing is this, it's repentance. It's repentance. It's appointed unto man, the Bible said, once to die. And after that, the judgment. There's no reason to think that there'll be any opportunity for repentance and faith in the life to come. This is the moment in time that God has granted both you and I. Don't let it slip through your fingers. Don't waste the opportunity and the chance that God has granted to every man, woman, boy, and girl. This is your moment. It would take all the meaning out of the urgent pleadings of the Holy Spirit as we hear his voice in the scriptures calling upon men to repent and to believe in Christ, if regardless of whether they repented or not, they would have a chance to do so in the world to come. We would procrastinate. We would wait. But that's not the message of God's word. Behold, today is the day of salvation. On the stormy southwest coast of England, there is a church whose towers are silent. No bell ever rings for the living or tolls for the dead. There is a legend that a ship was once bearing its way along the shore and that it had on board the bells designed for this particular church. A young sailor lad on the ship hearing Neighboring bells ringing out, tolling out, sounding out over the seas. Thank God for that favor that would soon bring these bells safe to port for that particular church they were heading to. But the godless skipper told him to thank the steersman, thank the good ship, thank the ready sail. And as if in answer to his blasphemy, the sea rose and the waves dashed the ship and its godless master on the rocks and down the ship went in destruction. Now they say that the bells, which, down, which went down with that ship, may be heard above the surge of the ocean as it breaks on the iron cliffs Peeling out the invitation of the church, the invitation of God, the coming of death, and after death, the judgment. For you today, the bells of grace and mercy still peal and still ring. You draw in breath, you have a heartbeat. God's grace is still actively reaching out to you and Endeavor to draw you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. These bells have not yet become a dirge or a keel. Opportunity is still within your hands. Will you please think of tomorrow? My friends, the road comes to an end. It does in everything in life. Childhood comes to an end. Youth comes to an end. Middle age comes to an end. And then, of course, the senior citizen, the elderly, their life will come to an end. The job that you work will come to an end. The schooling you involve yourself will come to an end. Everything in life has a conclusion, including life itself. What then? Shall it be the end of the wicked and the unbeliever which shall be cut off? Is that the place that you will occupy? Or shall the end of that man be peace? Can you say now, well, 
still it is called today, and ere the night cometh, and before the road ends, for you, my friend, this morning. Will the end of you be peace? I pray it will be. And it can be. If you'll embrace the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because as sure as he is, you're hearing my voice today. In the appointed time, the life as you know it here will come to a conclusion. The road will end. And when you open your eyes in eternity, it'll either be heaven or it will be hell. This morning, as we realize one day the road will end, the choice, my friend, is yours. Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads this morning, there are certainly those under the sound of my voice that are not right with God. I don't know why, but they have put it off. They've neglected. They have dragged their feet. But God, I pray this message on the road ends. It has aroused them this morning. It's, 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 it's shaken them. It is waking them up, God. And I pray that right now that they would bow their heads in repentance. And they would ask Jesus Christ into their heart and life to be their Lord and Savior. They would plead with God to forgive them of their sins and that, Lord, this morning, you would take a residency in their heart and life and be their Lord and be their Savior. I'm praying, God, right now that there are many doing just that. They have prayed a simple prayer of repentance and asked God in. And God, as they've done it, you have come in. You've given them hope and life and forgiveness and eternal life. And Lord God, may you help them now. May you assist them as we're just early into this year of 2022 now to live for you all the rest of the days of their life and father i pray understanding the road ends it'll cause us god to take more time with one another to extend kindnesses and love so that one day when the road ends for that loved one you'll not stand there in regret and god because the road ends may it give us a passion as believers to go out and touch as many lost people as we can before it is too late for them and before our opportunity comes to a conclusion. Father, I pray, let these thoughts find a nesting place in our hearts and our minds today and may they not soon be forgotten, I pray. Now, Lord, another week is upon us. May you go before us. May you guide and direct our steps. May you keep us safe. And may you use us, God, to make a difference, we pray. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining with us today. I hope that these messages on the road signs have really impacted your life. We're going to come back next week and believe God for the right message, for the right moment when we join back up with you again. Have a great week in God, and God bless you.